Here now is Faith to Live By with Pastor Barber. Psalm 27, verses 4 and 5 read, One thing I have asked from the Lord that I shall seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to meditate in his temple. For in the day of trouble he will conceal me in his tabernacle, in the secret place of his tent. He will hide me. He will lift me up on a rock. We begin with the male quartet singing, Hide Me, Rock of Ages. The Bible has the answer. You have provided the questions and we search the scriptures, God's holy word, in order to find the answers. Question number one, explain the word Eucharist. This comes from the Greek verb to give thanks, the word Eucharist that we have in the English language. And typically it is connected to the Lord's Supper or to Holy Communion. I want to take you to three portions of scripture, though there are many others. Ephesians chapter one and verse 16, this draws out for us the essential meaning of the word Eucharist. Ephesians chapter one and verse 16, the apostle Paul says that he does not cease giving thanks. That is the Greek word, uh, the root word, Eucharisteo. I do not cease giving thanks for you while making mention of you in my prayers. And we also have it, the apostle, as he addresses the Colossian church, Colossians chapter one, verse three, he says, we give 
thanks to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Again, there is Eucharist teo, which is used. But 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 24, where the Apostle Paul is giving a reminder to the church of Corinth about the Lord's table, and he says, for I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you. He has told them about this in person previously, that the Lord Jesus, in the night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, and once again, the Greek word eucharisteo, the verb, is used there. When he had given thanks, when the Lord Jesus Christ had blessed the, the emblems, the symbols of his body and of his shed blood. He broke it and said, this is my body which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And for this reason, Eucharist has come to be connected most especially with the observance of Holy Communion, but in the root of the word's meaning in the Greek language, it simply means the giving of thanks. Question number two, say something about 2 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 17. 2 Timothy is Paul's last letter, undoubtedly his final goodbye, and he is addressing his young associate in ministry and he is just a few verses from the end of this letter. Here is what 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 17 says. But the Lord stood with me. He says, at my first offense, no one supported me, but all deserted me. May it not be counted against them. But the Lord stood with me and strengthened me so that through me the proclamation might be fully accomplished and that all the Gentiles might hear, and I was rescued out of the lion's mouth. This verse leaps off the page for me with allusions and with thoughts that come to the forefront throughout the scriptures. First of all, I think of 1 Samuel chapter 3 and verse 10, the word about Samuel and the Lord coming and standing right beside him, speaking a word of prophecy to him, Samuel, when he was just a lad. Then I think of Matthew chapter 28 and verse 20, the Great Commission, where Jesus says, And lo, I am with you always, even to the very end of the age. Here Paul says, The Lord stood with me and strengthened me. Well. Jesus said that he would be with us even to the very end of the age. 1 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 12 says, the Apostle Paul again writing, I thank Christ Jesus our Lord who has strengthened me. Right through the ministry of the Apostle Paul, he had been well acquainted with the strength that Christ had provided to him. Acts chapter 18 and verse 12, it says about Gallio was proconsul of Achaia. The, the, um, and Paul is speaking, do not be afraid, or rather Christ is speaking to Paul, do not be afraid any longer, but go on speaking and do not be silent. And Christ strengthens his servant. Romans chapter 15, and verses 19 and 20, Paul had spoken about how that the gospel had been proclaimed among the Gentiles in Romans chapter 15, verse 19 and 20. He speaks about from Jerusalem as far round, about as far as Elycrium, I have fully preached the gospel of Christ. And then finally, in 1 Peter chapter 5, and verse 8 and 9, Paul says that he had been spared out of the mouth of the lion. Peter likens the devil to a roaring lion. 
Peter says, be of sober spirit, be on the alert. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour, but resist him, firm in your faith, knowing that the same experiences of suffering are being accomplished by your brethren who are in the world. So here, this 2 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 17, the Lord strengthened Paul and he bore witness to it. The Lord will strengthen you as you walk with him. The Lord will strengthen his own and the Lord will accomplish. The Lord wants his word to be proclaimed. He will accomplish that, that the Gentiles might hear and he keeps his own out of the mouth of the lion. What a wonderful word of Christ's keeping power that he keeps his own. Thank you for each of these questions. If you have a question, send it to us. Our mailing address is Faith to Live By, Box 426, Winnipeg, Manitoba, R3C2H6. Heidi, Rick, Terry now sing Where Could I Go? And that is followed by Lois, Jan, and Rick singing Heaven is near. Living below in this so sinful world, hardly a comfort can afford. Striving alone to face temptation sore, where could I go but to the Lord? Where could I for my soul, needing a friend to help me in the end, where could I go but to the Lord? Neighbors are kind, I love them, everyone, we get along in sweet accord.
Faith to Live By Resources has just released this brand new Christmas CD entitled Silent Night. 13 glorious carols of Christmas, which you will enjoy as well as six Christmas scripture reading portions by the Faith to Live By team. Ask for your copy when you write to us, and also as you write and ask for that copy of Silent Night, you will want to have a copy of our brand new 2024 Scenic Scripture Text Wall Calendar. It's yours simply for the asking, as long as the limited resources or limited number last. Our mailing address is Faith to Live By, Box 426, Winnipeg, Manitoba, R3C2H6. You may also call us toll-free 1-833-367-3852, or you may use our website, faithtoliveby.ca. Now, my daughter, Ruth Lang, comes to sing, May I Never Lose the Wonder. The Apostle Peter in his first epistle, chapter two, declares to the people whom he loves and is deeply concerned about, people who have endured persecution and hardship and very real continued hardship is immediately before them. The Apostle Peter encourages these believers in this way. But you are a chosen race a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for God's own possession, so that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. For you once were not a people, 
but now you are the people of God. You had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. It's good for each and every one of us to be reminded very powerfully what Christ has done for us, and this Peter has done in chapter 1, how that Christ has made us alive and how that we, because of the shed blood of Jesus Christ, we have been born again to a living hope. But it's good not just to think of the past, it's good to remember present reality, sometimes persecution, sometimes hardship, sometimes the trials and difficulties of life can obscure our vision and we can forget who we are right now. Peter is unequivocal and he says, you are a chosen race. You aren't just any old buddy. You are chosen in Christ. He says, you are not simply a priesthood, but you are a royal priesthood. There is a combination of monarchy and religious service that is blended together. And he says, this is who you are. You are priests to God Most High. And he says, you are not simply a collection of people, uh, that is, a nation, but you are a holy nation. Holy means something that has been set aside for a specific purpose. Here, a specific divine purpose. You are a holy nation, a people for God's own possession. God has come to possess you. He has taken you out of the ordinary, and he has made something very special indeed of you. And the purpose of what God has done in this choosing and in this appointing, in this selection process, is that you, these believers were not simply to lay back and think, oh, thank God that I'm saved. Now I just wait for heaven and I wait for Christ to return to take me home. Peter says, there is a purpose for why God has done what he has done in bringing you to himself through the shed blood of Jesus Christ. It is so that you may proclaim, that you may trumpet the excellencies, the surpassing greatness of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Some people wonder why is it in the creation account that there was evening and there was morning, day one. There was evening and there was morning, day two. Evening and morning, day three. You see, God is forever moving us from the darkness into the light. In our thinking, we have day and then we have night that follows. But God, he is the one who is taking us out of darkness and he brings us into the light. And that is something that only he can do in his power. And so he has brought us out of the darkness into his glorious, his splendid, his resplendent light. Now, once you were not a people, but now you are not simply a people, but you are the people of God himself. Once you had not received mercy, you did not know what the grace of God was all about. His kindness, his loving kindness had not been extended to you. But now you have tasted of the goodness of the Lord and you have known that it is the very definition of good indeed. And so Peter, he has an action plan as a result of reminding these people of who they are, that they might proclaim the excellencies of him who has called them so. But another word, he says, beloved, he speaks to them in family terms. He speaks to them in terms of endearment. Beloved, I urge you as aliens. Now we've heard that before as well in chapter one. He has described these people as aliens, as strangers in this world, as aliens and strangers to abstain from fleshly lusts which wage war against the soul and keep your behavior excellent 
among the Gentiles, so that in the thing in which they slander you as evildoers, they may, because of your good deeds as they observe them, glorify God. Dear fellow believer, we are in the midst of this world, not simply by what we say, by what we do and how we live. Proclaim the glory of our God and that he has done a great work within us. Live it as well as proclaim it. And may the world round about you know that we serve a great God and Jesus Christ is indeed a great Savior. Thank you for joining Pastor Barber today. Please watch for Faith to Live By again next Sunday at this same time on this same station. Until then, Faith to Live By prays that the peace of God will fill your heart and that the joy of the Lord will be your strength. Pastor Barber would love to hear from you. The mailing address is Faith to Live By, Box 426, Winnipeg, Manitoba, R3C2H6.